Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Outer Rim Cantina. My name is Alan and today I'm here to give you your weekly Star Wars news roundup. And now that celebration is over, we have uh, quite a lot to talk about actually, so let's just go ahead and get into our first story, which is all about Star Wars The Clone Wars. So, one of the most anticipated panels at Celebration last weekend was for Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Dave Filoni and the cast of the show came out to talk about the creation and work put into this final season of the show, and the cast got to share some personal insight into what it was like finally having the opportunity to finish it off. We also got lots of concept art featuring Ahsoka, Rex, and even some brand new characters. On top of this, we also got three clips, a retrospective of the whole series, and a full-length trailer for Season 7. So to the people watching these Celebration livestreams at home like me, who were very disappointed when they blacked out the Mandalorian panel to show a clip from that, this, I think, more than made up for it. Now, the only thing that seemed to be missing from the panel was the actual release date of the show. We know it's coming to Disney+, Plus. we just have no idea when. That's really the only thing I can think to nitpick or really complain about. And even that's not really much. I mean, they gave us, they gave us so many details about the show, having all the cast together was amazing to see, and one of my personal favorite things from that panel was the fact that Dave Filoni revealed that for Season 7, which is going to focus on the Siege of Mandalore, they called in Ray Park, the original Darth Maul from Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, to do motion capture for the Darth Maul fights in this season. So we're going to get double the Maul with Ray Park's fighting and Sam Witwer's voice. Now moving on to our second story, we have comics, comics, and more comics. Marvel unveiled a heap of new comic books at Celebration and gave us some insight into what it's like creating their popular Age of series. Among the new releases and soon to be released, we got news about the Galaxy's Edge tie-ins. The series is set to focus on a popular junk shop on Batu and will span across the galaxy and the saga. Written by Ethan Sachs and art by Will Sliney, Marvel is gearing up to give you everything you need to get acquainted with Batu and Black Spire Outpost before you even set foot in the new Disney park. Greg Pak spoke about the Age of Rebellion series, which just kicked off with Leia and Tarkin, and gave fans a glimpse at the Boba Fett issue, which is apparently going to be like a Star Wars western, so that's pretty cool. I definitely cannot wait for that issue to get some more of that sweet, sweet Boba Fett. And, of course, we're getting yet another Vader comic, because Marvel apparently really wants to milk him dry, and also apparently seems to have absolutely no grasp on what Vader fatigue is. This one, however, is going to have a slightly different take than what we've seen before. The series will feature Bellarit Valance, the Legends bounty hunter that was canonized in another series, Han Solo Imperial Cadet, on a mission to hunt down the Dark Lord and attempt to kill him. Surprisingly, this sounds very interesting to me and I can't wait until we get the first issue. Of course, like I said in the beginning, it is still a Vader comic, but we'll see. I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt that it will be different from what we've seen in the previous Vader comics. Moving on to our third story, we got some new details on The Mandalorian's release. Among all the news and excitement around The Mandalorian panel at Celebration last weekend, a very important piece of news was announced after the fact. According to Entertainment Weekly, the entire first season of the show won't be released all in one day, like services such as Netflix or Amazon Prime do, with their new shows where they just dump the entire season in one day and let you binge watch to your heart's desire. After the first episode drops with the launch on Disney Plus on November 12th, it's expected that the show will have a weekly release schedule and finish up just before Rise of the Skywalker hits theaters. This approach might seem strange to people comparing Disney Plus to Netflix, but it actually does make a lot of sense. Disney Plus won't initially have the massive library of content subscribers can fall back on if they binge watch a series in one day like Netflix, and Disney wants to keep people subscribed for as long as possible, so having a tiered release like this will keep people around for longer and 
I personally like it just because I know I have a problem like with the Netflix Marvel shows. The day they drop the entire season, I immediately start binge watching it and I usually finish the season in one to two days and after that I just, I just feel kind of empty inside. It's like, okay, well what, I've watched the show, what do I do now? So having this tiered release where I will actually have something to look forward to every week will be a welcome change from what we've seen on Netflix and Amazon Prime. And for our fourth and final story, we're talking about J.J. Abrams and how he looked to the past to create Rise of Skywalker. In an interview with Good Morning America, J.J. dropped, rather surprisingly, that he had talked with George Lucas, Lawrence Kasdan, and of course, Ryan Johnson to make episode 9. And I say rather surprisingly because, as we all know, when Disney acquired Lucasfilm, they just basically trashed all of the ideas that George gave them and said, hey, we're going to come up with our original stories and everything's going to be completely original. But I, I guess not, at least not with episode 9, which can really only be good, I would think. He's quoted as saying this on the interview. We met with George Lucas. We met with Ryan Johnson. We talked with Larry Kasten. Developing the movie involved a lot of thinking and trying not to overthink but really considering what this story meant. While J.J. was not pressed for more information after that quote, it will be interesting to see how his talks with the two Star Wars veterans will translate into the final installment of the Skywalker Saga. Along with this, we also got a reason for keeping the title reveal from fans and the world until the reveal at Celebration. In that same interview, J.J. is again quoted as saying, it felt like there were a series of Star Wars movies that came out pretty close behind this one. We didn't want to feel like we were getting lost in that. We felt like it was kind of better to wait until the right moment. Now, I personally agree with JJ on this. It was feeling like there was an overload of Star Wars for a while, and everyone just needed a break to get over The Last Jedi and Solo before people got talking about Episode 9. <clears throat> And we also got a quote from Kathleen Kennedy herself about the rise of Skywalker. She was quoted as saying, I think it will absolutely live up to the hype. I think we have all poured our heart and soul into making sure it lives up to the hype. I think the story is pretty great. Now, all we can do is speculate and wait and see what we get in December, but I personally have high hopes for Episode 9 being one of the best Star Wars films in the whole saga. And in the tone of looking to the past, in another interview JJ did with Fandango, he touched on one of the major complaints of his first Star Wars film, The Force Awakens, and how it was a rehashed and reshot A New Hope. Now, this was my biggest complaint of the movie, and to me, it just makes it boring and hard to sit through. He did go on to say that his main goal, besides finishing off a 9 part story 42 years in the making, was to create an entirely new adventure that we haven't experienced before. We'll have to wait and see how that translates on screen, of course, but it gives me more hope that this movie is going to be amazing. And that is all this week's Star Wars news. If you enjoyed this, slap a like on this video, get subscribed if you aren't already, and I will see you back here in the cantina on Tuesday for another video. But until then, may the Force be with you.